Hey girlfriend, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Kobe. Thanks for joining me for another video. Hopefully you're all caught up on the vids. If not, here they are. Go check them out. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all your friends to make sure they tell all their neighbors so they can come be a part of the girlfriends, okay? It's, it's cute over here. Today, you read the title correctly. It is my version of a tell-all from the reality show that I was on back when I was in college called So Sharp. It's on Lifetime. I think it's still on demand. If it is, I'll make sure to put a link down in the description box so you can go back and see all of the things, okay? And I had some new makeup products to try out that I got from my birthday, and so I just thought, what better way, you know, spill some tea and try some new things. So, if you want to see how I got this look, and all of the things that I got to say, just keep on watching. So like I mentioned in the intro, I have some new products that I wanna try out. I kinda did a little damage in Ulta um, for my birthday. I don't know when the next time I'm going out is, so I was like, let me just sit down and film a video. First things first, my eyebrows i finally did them did them for my birthday um and i sat down and i filmed a video the night before my birthday of my makeup and like what i was gonna do and i forgot to press record i figured out how to turn my macbook into a viewfinder and so if i look down it's because i'm trying to make sure that i'm recording still so i'm gonna use some edge control um to smooth my brows down okay so let's dive in to these questions first question is what did i love the most or what was the best part about being on so sharp and i want to say i have a document of my entire senior year on film <laughs> and so that's kind of cool to think and be able to tell like my kids one day if you want to know what i was like in college <laughs> here it is Getting to go on the press tour was fun. We went to LA and that was fun. You have to remember that this was like almost four years ago for me. Yeah, almost four years ago. So some things I may be a little blurred on, um, but I'm trying to remember my best everything. And so I would say that's, that's the best part. Getting just to, I have 10 videos that are perfectly filmed of my life for 10 weeks. I got to document for while I was in college. So that's pretty cool. The second question is, did the show change your relationships and friendships with anyone? So yes, I was in a relationship while we were filming So Sharp and that, it was it was a lot of pressure on us just in our relationship because legally by NCAA rule, I couldn't, like none of us that had boyfriends that were also athletes, because I wasn't the only one, could have them on the show. So it was hard, like we'd be going through things and then on the show it would translate into something else and so that was pretty hard so okay i'm using the ulta beauty mattifying face primer it's control shine and blurs pores i didn't know how much i would like it so i just got a little tester and then on top of my actual relationship my my friendship with one of my best friends got extremely close because she wasn't I think she I think there's like one scene of us talking um like at a like at a bar or something but like she wasn't like a main cast member or whatever but like she's my best friend in real life and obviously portrayed on the show and because she kind of had like a bird's eye view of like what was going on I was able to talk to her about everything and so it was like she knew because she's my best friend so she knows what's going on in my personal life on top of knowing what's going on on the show she was able to keep me level-headed on top of helping me through everything else i had going on the next one was what was the worst part about filming i will say the timing and scheduling that was the worst part so you have to think about it we filmed for 10 10 more like 14 weeks there's because there's a lot of stuff that didn't get shown so we filmed for about 14 weeks jesus am i barking on hives again yeah, I sure am. The show aired 10 episodes, right? So I was in the midst of graduating. This is also when I was trying to figure out if I was going to go to grad school and what grad school I was going to go to. 
Um, and then, so we didn't, we already didn't have like a conventional practice schedule. We practiced at night from like eight to 10 sometimes, like eight to, eight to 10, eight to 11, eight to midnight, like whatever we could get in. So with filming, everything was longer. Add on like four or five hours with filming. Let's say practice started at seven, but I needed to film a scene before we got to practice. So I would have to get hair and makeup ready. What I was gonna, and that was, that sucked. Having to wear makeup to practice kind of sucks for me because I hate wearing makeup and sweating. It's like a pet peeve of mine. But so hair and makeup ready, film the scene. If we didn't have to film the scene, that was like a scene before, that was always a plus. Um, Cause we got to take our time a little bit more to get to the studio or get to wherever yeah get to the studio or get to the game we would we probably have to film a scene before and then we had to do like on spot interviews so it's like if something happened or if a confrontation or a conversation or something happened uh, while we were at practice we would have to like film it film the interview or like the I don't really know what it's called I think they're just interviews as they were happening and then we'd have to film interviews after practice so there were sometimes I was getting to the studio at 7 and then not leaving until 1 1 30 and then I would have to turn around I would have to drive 30 minutes back to campus and then get up and get ready for work or class the next morning at like 7 8 o'clock so I would say scheduling was the hardest part but it's like what what can you do you know what I mean like you're on a show um you signed a contract like you committed to this you gotta see it you gotta see it through my boy okay like that's what we had to do and it was hard you know what I mean like I'm we're taking midterms we're taking tests a lot of us were taking like grad school entry tests like it, it wasn't easy you know also dealing with relationships a lot of us were not from Louisville so this is a whole new world for some of us and we don't have our parents there like granted we're adults but like you're entering a whole new realm of life doing all new things and sometimes you need you know that support your family support or whatever so there were times when I would let's say we didn't have to film that weekend or we like let's say we had practice on Thursday didn't have a game on Friday or Saturday but like had to be back to film interviews on Sunday I would go to work on Friday and then leave and go home for the night. I remember one time, a few times, Ry Riley Rose and one of our other friends would, would do that, leave practice and go straight home to Pittsburgh just for, you know, the weekend or a night just because we needed a break. So normally I've been using like a, a loose powder that's my skin tone, but because I'm using a new foundation, I'm gonna go back to using just the Shine Free Powder in the medium shade so it doesn't like alter the shade or anything because this is my first time using this foundation and I color matched myself in Sephora and you know Sephora will play you or in them lights will play you like a fiddle okay the next question is would you say that there was more pressure on you because the cameras were there to double title um or to win nationals duh <laughs> I would say that and just like in the dance world is not big like you may think it is but like once you or outside people may think it is but like once you get i know i look crazy but once you get to like certain parts of dance so like the studio dance world it, everyone knows everyone the all-star dance world everyone knows everyone dance team everyone knows everyone in college it's the exact same way like you know everybody or at least you know who they are you know what certain programs are things like that so for us, National Dance Alliance, NDA is where we competed. We go to camp at the beginning of the year in the summer, and then we compete in April at nationals. So we have to see people twice a year. And then we turn around in April, there's a short turnaround to when camp is again, like in June or July or whatever. So it's like you, you, you start to remember who certain people are from specific programs, especially if you compete against them um, at camp and at nationals, you remember who these people are. And so I had been there, that was my fourth year that I was there, my senior year. And so it was, people knew 
who I was. And there's also one of my closest and dearest friends, her name's Elle. We resemble each other. We're five years apart, but we resemble each other a lot. And when I was a freshman, she was a fifth year. And so a lot of the times people thought I was her. Like we, people just thought I had been there for 45 and a half years and I was never graduating, but it's like, lo and behold, there's a whole new person. So definitely a lot more pressure with the cameras and because we had just double titled the year before and we wanted to, you know, repeat it. And you have people that know us from previous years, right? The next one is, what is your favorite Ladybird dance that ever aired or ever? And I I think I have two, if I can remember the names of them. So my first favorite would have to be probably my last hip hop nationals routine. Um, with, it was like the black and white, um, outfit black leggings like a white and black jersey I'd have to say that was my favorite because that's the last one literally that's the last dance I've ever competed was that routine because we do hip-hop last so that was my favorite it's my number one favorite and then my second one I don't know oh there's one I watched this video a lot. Shannon Perez um, choreographed a lot of our routines and um, Carson Rowe uh, choreographed our hip hop routine, but Shannon Perez choreographed this gamer, game day routine for us. And it was an Iggy Azalea song, but I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but me and my best friend on the team, who's my best friend in life too, we split center. And it was like the first time we'd ever mirrored each other on center and so that's like that's probably my favorite to think about is that I got to dance on center. and we I think we got some good pictures that game too <laughs> yeah that's that's my favorite I can't remember I can't remember the name of the dance though and I don't even think it's on Instagram I think it's just on my phone yeah that's it don't even know okay so the new foundation that I got is the hourglass it's the hourglass vanish foundation and this isn't new it's just new to me <laughs> it came out like two or three years ago I want to say two yeah two or three years ago this is what it looks like it is in this super sleek um capsule and it is a foundation stick I got it in the color walnut it looks walnut looks really really red in the cartridge but the color above this was way too olive so we're going to go with walnut we're going to hope to god that this works and this oh baby yeah, this is probably not going to, I am nervous, you all. So this is more red than any foundation that I normally use. We're going to use, this is from e.l.f. This is a buffing and ultra ultimate blending brush. So let's see. Okay, I feel like, okay, the color isn't horrible. Or maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe the light's just too bright in my eyes. But I don't feel like the color is that off as much as it looks when you first put it on. But I also think blending it with this brush makes it very sheer. Yeah, I think it makes it very sheer. But it, like, looks like my skin. That's very, hey, don't judge books by their cover, okay? Okay very deceiving very very deceiving I know a lot of people that use this a lot of other beauty influencers that I watch that have used this when it first came out got two shades um and it worked for them so now I'm going to use this beauty sponge and see if we can get something a little different over here see it's a little bit it's more red maybe I had something on that beauty sponge because it's more red I mean that brush it's picking up very much more red with using this which I mean I feel like we can fix but baby it is red baby girl my face do you see what I see this is wow I'm gonna go and use another brush maybe this will work this is the morphe e63 i feel like i can make it work with um 
like my concealer and stuff i feel like it'll all come together yeah. i'm really breaking out something heavy probably gonna have to go with the darker shade or the other shade when i re-up because i mean i want i want to like it you know so if i go if i do like it if it wears well then i will just go with a different shade and then mix the two okay so definitely definitely most definitely have to use a brush the beauty sponge ain't cutting it it's not getting what i need to do i got a new concealer this is the hide and peak concealer whoa from morphe the morphe 2 and this is a corrector but we're gonna use it as a concealer like a regular concealer it's very cooling on the skin i like their version of this doe foot it's flat on each side i do really like that oh it's in the color peak of golden and this maybe will add some more coverage to that area those like this area as well because it, i need it i need it all and as i continue to look at the foundation it's starting to set into my skin i'm okay with it i'm cool you be cool okay next question if you could go back and change one thing you said or did in so sharp what would it be i definitely most definitely would be more open i feel like i'm a fairly open person in general mm, my mom tells me that i'm kind of a private person <laughs> so i guess it's just like what i'm willing to share um i'm very much of if i don't want to share something take a number you know what i mean um leave a voicemail i'm that i'm that type of person if i don't want to share something but i do feel like i'm pretty for the most part i don't really talk about things unless i consider them common knowledge which means somebody probably somebody in my inner circle knows about it but also somebody that's not in my inner circle also knows about it and once you're not in my inner circle and you know the information it is therefore common knowledge so i will say that i definitely would have been more open um people always ask me like would i have been nicer and i just don't know what else you expect from me like that is who i am i'm a very straightforward no chaser this is what you get and i leave some things up for a mystery but like in real life i'm i i'm very i'm nice like I'm not this like Satan of a person that people try to make me out to seem like I was on the show. Obviously, you have to remember it's to you, it's 30 minutes. But in reality, you only get like 21 minutes of the show because of commercials. So you're only seeing 20, 21 minutes of an episode that took seven days to film. You know, it's not like you're getting every single thing that happened in in that week of what we filmed there's stuff on there or there's 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 parts of episodes that are still in the vault like you'll never see them um and that's just how it is i'm a cancer so i'm naturally very emotional and i also think that with people saying that they're very emotional you also you have to understand that emotions are not just sad and mad like when I'm happy, that's an emotion. When I'm elated about something, that's an emotion. When I'm excited, that's an emotion. So just because I say I'm an emotional person doesn't mean that like I'm sad and I'm weeping and I'm crying in my corner all of the time. That's not what it is. Like, and I think that comes with maturity, people understanding that. I think it comes with maturity. And I think it comes with getting to know the people that are around you. Like if you don't take the time to get to know me, because I am much more than what you see on TV. If you follow me on Instagram, I you should be if you aren't. You will know that like, first of all, I'm hilarious. Let's just get that off the bat. But I share a good amount. You get to see more than just dance. You know what I mean? And I think that that is the part of the show that people miss. All of us on this show and on this platform are also human beings outside of being dancers. And 
everybody that's on the show that was on the show or that was a main cast member none of us are dancing none of us none of us are still dancing in our lives now I still choreograph and teach I feel like some other girls may be doing the same things but like we're not dancing professionally so it's like we have a life outside of what you saw and like outside of dance too um and so I think if I were to go back and redo some things I would be one much nicer to my producer shout out to Kelly she was just doing her job and we we're so alike, but I hate meeting new people. And it's not because I I don't wanna like new people. It's, I have a very hard time getting close to people once I'm comfortable with the people that I have in my life. And I've gotten over that a little bit, but it's hard for me to meet new people and be like all gung-ho about it. Like, what did Drake say? I'm not a people person, I'm a people's person. Like, I. I gravitate to people people gravitate to me but I'm still kind of closed off in that sense like I've had people try to use me I've had people try to manipulate me I've had you know people try to steal from me like I've had all of these things happen to me and that's why I am the way I am you can't really get anything over on me um and if you do then chalk it up because that's gonna be your only one you know I feel like that I try to take the lessons that my parents taught me, especially my dad, about reading people and about knowing your boundaries. And I feel like I needed to set boundaries in that instance and with filming the show, but like, it's your reality. You can't really, and when you can't show parts of your reality, then it's like you feel like you're in a box and you're trying to break out of it. I hope that made sense and I wasn't just rambling. I think about it now because I, <laughs> love reality tv <laughs> it's my favorite thing me and my cousin are addicted to real housewives all of them we dm each other on instagram twitter tiktok text each other all the time about the different housewives and we stay up to date on all of the shows and everything and so like i'm a i'm literally addicted to reality tv and so for me to not give the people what they want in a sense to not you know deliver wasn't right of me you know I could have done better I could have done more but you know when you have people essentially a whole world whole nation of viewers invaded our space for 10 weeks and we didn't know how to deal with that <laughs> like I grew up acting and modeling but like those were scripts like I read off of a script I didn't it wasn't my reality you know so it's different what is it like filming and doing interviews and confessionals well hmm depends on how the week was honestly um and I feel like that goes to say for every reality show it really does depend on how that week in filming went because you could have a really easy peasy confessional or you could have a tea filled confessional and I feel like sometimes I feel like majority of the time mine were very tea filled but um even when I didn't have hard crazy weeks I feel like they were always the tea filled <laughs> um I will say that majority of my sayings came from uh came from my confessionals which watering the plants I should have put that on a t-shirt like that was that was hilarious that and describing what a sewing was <laughs> I don't know they used it as a meme and it is so like a uh, a meme a gif one of those where it was like the they like so before every show lifetime would make these little snippets of like the funniest thing that happened in the episode and post it on twitter and so that's what one of them was for that episode they like broke down what it meant to have a sew in and then it just it took off from there I felt like I had a responsibility as a black woman to like be blackity black black because I am like no sugarcoating it I'm I'm real black our hair for instance I for five years wore sew-ins religiously because I didn't want 
my real hair to get messed up and break off and if you watched the episode where we wore the all red and we had to have a ponytail you my hair is so why would you expect me to put it on the top of my head mm -mm. no 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 my boyfriend was on the court i'm not about to be out on the court looking a hot flaming mess in front of my boyfriend at the time my mom would be like sister what are you doing and my dad would drag me like a rag if i went out there and you saw all of my tracks around my head no 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 and it's crazy because we've never worn we never wore our hair in ponytails so, <laughs> to dance so i just thought it was like he was joking like i didn't think he was for real okay moving along how did we find out we were going to be filming so my sophomore year riley vertez came to ladybirds and if you don't know who she is her mom and her little sister are jill and kendall vertez and they were on dance moms so I feel like that kind of sparked it all. I don't know how much they had to do with it, but I think that kind of sparked it all because they, the producers and stuff were already in their lives. And so I'm guessing that the whole point of our show was to be the college version of Dance Moms. Um, clearly, it didn't really work out. I think I was excited, but I also like, not gonna lie, I thought it was a bunch of bullshit. Like I didn't think it was actually gonna happen. I didn't. I didn't think it was gonna actually go go to production and things like that i just didn't i thought it, it was just an idea that was had and you know maybe in a few years they'll do something like that i just didn't think it was going to happen okay did watching the show air spark more drama um duh we filmed it in the spring it filmed it aired in the fall so we were all back by then um back in school and all of that back on campus whatever what have you so we would have to I don't think we were like obligated to do this but it like helped engagement and stuff and this is kind of how we grew with our followers we um would live tweet or we would go we would do like a live after each episode just to kind of converse about what happened in the episode and things like that and so obviously you know, it sparks up emotions again you're like playing on what the episode what happened in the episode but like you may not even feel that way like I remember one episode happened and I was live tweeting because it was never an issue when people were live tweeting on the show about me it was never an issue they would say catty things about me all of that based off of what was happening in the episode but like we would be at practice before that and after that and we'd be cool like there was no issue but when i did it it was a problem like when i talked about the episode or like when i added on to what was going on in the episode it wasn't it was a problem and it's like at some point you have to realize that you're a whole adult out in these streets and y'all didn't care about my feelings so why should i care about yours you know what i mean i'm not going to sugarcoat anything that happened i'm not sugarcoating it now i didn't sugarcoat it then and even if it wasn't filmed i wouldn't sugarcoat it like this is just how i am i've always been straight no chaser you're always going to get the truth from me whether you like it or not so sometimes we would it was like we were going back in time and we'd have to start all over with getting over a situation or getting over an issue and it's just like this is how i die <laughs> all right we're rounding it out um how has being on a reality show changed you as a person hmm i'm a lot calmer now let's say you can ask pretty much anybody that's been in my life since then or like before like before the show to now i'm a lot calmer now than i was back then i do still cuss a lot but i am able i've always been one of those types of people that were able to see people for who they were but i'm more able now because there's been people that have tried to use me and it's like for one i'm not famous people don't know who i am and for two i don't know what you expect that you're going to get out of me but i'm not i'm also not dumb like i I notice and I see when people start to move differently when people start to um say different things like I'm not dumb but I am now much more observant of people like the amount of people that I let in my inner sanctum is like 
once every three to five business years would i do another reality show and if show if so what type hell yeah especially now i think i'm funnier now <laughs> and i think i'm much more relaxed i didn't know what i was getting myself into right before with the first one now i'm a i'm a better i'm a bet in the game so i know more now i would definitely be on another one and if i had to choose put me on real housewives of dallas i will be a friend i don't have to be a housewife i will be a friend and i will soak that shit up i will be I was just talking to my cousin about this. We want to be besties with Tiffany Moon and Deandra. Like, all I need to do is be a friend. I don't I don't need to be a housewife because who's man? Right? We'd like to be a friend. So real housewives would be a good one. My other best friend told me that I needed to go on Love Island. It's a no for me, dog. I don't want to go on any dating shows. I was almost on The Bachelor with this last guy. It, close I was almost on there thank god I wasn't um I don't think dating shows are for me like shoot I'd relocate to Potomac just to be a friend on Real Housewives but also at the same time like come on now y'all know y'all want to see a show just about my life you know you do you know you do I feel like it would be <laughs> kind of boring because I work from home now my family is not here like my close family isn't here so you wouldn't get to see me and like my sisters interact especially like me and my oldest sister she's my best friend you wouldn't get to see us interact because we are the show you wouldn't get to see me and my 12 year old nephew interact because he is the epitome of me he's literally me as a 12 year old he is hilarious but he's also so annoying and it's like ah I really get a nice picture of what I was like when I was his age and it's, it's a doozy yeah, I don't think it would be very interesting right now. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, having my own show would make my life more interesting. Eh? VH1, Bravo, Netflix. Holla Chihuahua. Do I still have Ladybird uniforms and clothes? Yes, I have 9,000 Ladybird t-shirts and then I have a box of all of my uniforms that I got to keep and like tops and stuff that I got to keep and somehow they made it on the truck to come to Texas. What advice would I give future ladybirds? Go into the season, the opportunity, the year, whatever you call it, being completely yourself. Don't try to be somebody based off of who you think like the coach wants you to be or who you think you want your teammates to be or who, um, who came before you like don't think of being on the team as like living up to a legacy um because you'll psych yourself out of situations it'll make you more nervous about things jesus christ why is this eyebrow so much better than this one like this is like this is my star eyebrow this one could go rot go into it being fully yourself know that it is a um a privilege to be on the team it is not your right that was one thing that was drilled into our head and I fully believe that um go into being a ladybird because you love to dance not because you think you're gonna be on a show and that actually happened in hmm, just dance just go for the love of dance okay um I will say one thing that made my five years much easier is that I had no clue who the ladybirds were literally i found out like maybe two months before it was time for tryouts so going into it very oblivious just with my talent and my personality that worked for me so i think not knowing <laughs> as bad as it sounds not knowing what i was getting myself into worked to my advantage i didn't ever think i had to prove myself i just thought i had to be myself you know okay last question do i wish they would have filmed a season two yes solely because season one and season two would have been completely different right i think they i would have loved if they would have filmed a season two and continued to follow us like continue to follow us like the girls that were the main cast members on the show i think that would have been great to see that some of us did take the dance route some of us didn't right off the bat and that there is more to life than just dance you can it's always good to have a backup plan 
Okay, so this is the final look. I hope you enjoyed this kind of tell-all, I guess you could say, about the um, dance show So Sharp that I was on on Lifetime in, I want to say 2018. <laughs> Don't quote me. It is still on On Demand. If I can find it, I'll link the link below. I really appreciate you as always for tuning in to my videos. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So your friend to tell their friend to tell their neighbor to come be a part of their girlfriends. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.